Hello everyone. Namaskaram. Welcome to my channel VPK Nutrition Mind Body Healing with Pushpa. Uh, today is part three of our series on constipation and in this episode I'm going to be talking about lifestyle management as well as some yoga and pranayama which can help with constipation. So stay tuned to find out more. Welcome back everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for all my viewers and those who have already subscribed to my channel and uh, have been watching on a regular basis. Uh, for those who haven't already done, please do subscribe to this channel. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, uh, put some comment in there and also share with your friends and family so others can also benefit from the knowledge that I'm sharing. So let's get started. Um, in the, this is part three of uh, uh, the series on constipation. So the first uh, part I shared a lot about what is constipation, how it affects people, and what are the some symptoms and causes. So please go watch that if you haven't already done so because it does manifest differently in different doshas. And in the second episode, I talked about some of the dietary changes that are needed, what foods to eat and what not to eat. <clears throat> Again, I'll put all the links in the description so you can go watch them. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking about some lifestyle changes that you can do as well as some yoga and pranayama which are very specific for constipation. So let's get started. Number one, activity. Activity is very important. It's, it's so important that we keep moving because only when we move are we going to actually move our bowels. So try to do some exercise. Walking is a very good exercise at least 20 to 30 minutes a day or at least try 10 to 15 minutes maybe half an hour after you eat your meals. So this will keep you regular and um, you'll also feel much lighter and healthier. Number two, Stress is a major factor in a lot of our chronic illnesses and definitely leads to constipation. So it's very important that we learn to manage our stress. Now, we always have to face lots of uh, you know, things in our day-to-day -day life, but it's important we learn to manage those things without getting too agitated or disturbed by it. So a couple of things you can do for stress management. One of them, of course, if you're always sitting at the desk and working, make sure you take some breaks, walk around a little bit, or even take some deep breaths every every couple of hours so you get the vata flowing freely in the body. And if you have the opportunity, also go out and take some nature walks because nature has a way of giving us a lot of prana. The second thing you can do for stress management is abhyanga or oil massage. So again, oil massage, you can do that every day before you take a shower or at least once a week, try to do from head to toe a complete oil massage with a warm sesame oil because this will um, help to reduce the vata in the body and keep you more grounded and of course reduce the stress as well. And this relaxed state will help you have a better bowel movement. Number three is sleep. Now again, sleep is very important. We all know this, uh, how we need to follow the circadian rhythm, live with harmony with nature, get a good night's sleep. So it's important we try to turn off the screens at least 45 minutes to an hour before you go to bed, have a good uh, sleep routine, um, relax your mind, and then get to bed before 10 or 11 o'clock at night and get a nice eight hour sleep. So this way you're actually digesting the food you ate, the, the the thoughts that you had so this will also relax your mind and this way in the morning when you wake up you will have a sensation to go to the bathroom so this is very important Again, sleep is the most important thing to reduce stress as well as to have a good bowel moment, moment in the morning and and if you don't get that you're not going to have a lot of indigestion number four yoga now again yoga in general is very healthy to keep us grounded and uh, keep us regular but there are specific yoga poses that you can do just for constipation and i'm going to show a demo video of each one of these and you can watch them and there are four uh, poses that i have shared and just go ahead and watch those and try to practice this on a regular basis if you're suffering from chronic constipation remember all yoga asana should be done on an empty stomach Hello everyone. So asana number one is called Vajrasana. So in Vajrasana, you're basically sitting on your heels with your knees folded. So if I'm going to do sideways, um, this is how you would be sitting. Basically your toes are touching the floor and sit nice and tall with your back straight and comfortable. 
and you can sit like this right after you have a meal uh, for about five to ten minutes or however comfortable you feel so start very slow depending on your capacity and time now the other thing you can do if this hurts for you you can always take a cushion and then place it on top of your legs and then have a little bit of height there and this may be a little less painful so try this this week again just start slow with one minute and then keep going listen to your body and go with your own pace now asana number two is called ardha matsyendrasana so here you're extending your left leg bending your right knee placing your right foot on the outside of the left knee bending your left knee and your heel touches your buttocks now keep this one nice and tall so this is perpendicular to the floor take your left arm over the right take the other arm behind you then inhale and stretch exhale and twist to the right then hold it for a few seconds and then come back to center and again do that on the other side as well now uh, this is very good for digestion because you're kind of squeezing your liver and liver helps with the digestion so definitely try this uh, you can do this hold it for about 30 seconds on both sides and it'll help you with digestion do again all of this stuff should be done on an empty stomach asana number three is a squatting position so you want to stay this is called malasana you can sit in this position for about 30 seconds or as far as you can go or you can just kind of go up and down a couple of times to loosen up your muscles and then sit in a comfortable position after that asana number four is called pavana muktasana or wind releasing pose so bend your knees lift it off the floor hug your hug it into your chest inhale and as you exhale lift pull your stomach back lift your head up taking your nose towards your knee and stay here this is called wind releasing pose to help with any gas or bloating and then slowly bring your head back down bring your feet back down and then extend your legs and just relax and shavasana for a little bit so you get your whole body feels relaxed number five is pranayama now again pranayama is deep breathing or extension of your breath there are two specific ones that i have shown one is called kabalabati where you are uh, the inhalation is normal but exhalation is forced so you're kind of like a pumping action of the stomach but i would like you to do that very slowly um, and this will help with digestion as well as moving the apanavata or the elimination downwards the second one is just basic deep breathing and hold the air in your stomach belly this is called a bandha where you're kind of um, holding it like a pot for maybe a count of five and then releasing it so this way you also help with the toning of the muscles and elimination the and, and helping with the connecting the prana and the apanavata uh, in through the digestive system and i'm going to show you the demo of these two so pranayama is controlled breathing so we're going to do two of them today one is called kapalabhati which is also considered to be a kriya or an act, activity or action karma and the other one is uh, just deep breathing and holding it so first one is kapalabhati so here you're going to um, just do like a pumping action so the inhalation is normal exhalation is forced so i'm going to show you this So as you can see, it's like a pumping action. So just my stomach is going in and out. So this helps again to improve digestion and push that uh, contents downwards. Um, so this can be done about 10 to 25 times, depending on how comfortable you are. You start with a few and then build up to about 25. The second one is going to be just deep breathing. So you, again, it's nose breathing, inhaling through the nose, filling up the chest and the lungs and all the way up to the diaphragm and then you're going to hold the um, you're going to kind of lock your uh, upper abdomen which is called uh, Uddiyana Bandha so I'm going to demonstrate that so inhale so 
so you're locking the upper abdomen and making it like a pot and holding that air inside and then you're slowly exhaling out so if you feel like you're uh, out of breath then that means you're holding it too long do a shorter time because you want the action to be very smooth so this can be done about 10 times this is something again all of these have to be done on an empty stomach so you can do the kamalabhati about 10 to 25 times and then do this about 10 times so try this before a meal before lunch before dinner whenever you feel like doing or even first thing in the morning number six uh, squatting position is what is ideal for the bowels to move properly downwards again traditionally in india we used to have those toilets but nowadays we all have western toilets so naturally the position is not a squatting position it's just sitting like in a chair so naturally there is difficulty moving the bowel so you can get something called a squatty potty or even just a stool that you can keep in front of your um, toilet keep your feet up onto it and so your knees are up and you you are kind of in a squat position and this can also help things move down better number seven emotional health now again emotional health is also very important a lot of times when you're upset or uh, depressed anxious all of these things can affect you from having a bowel movement so it's very important that we keep our mind relaxed and if you have this tendency to get angry or anxious or depressed so try to practice some meditation just kind of sit quietly for some time and just observe your breath and even that can be very calming uh, to your mind and this could also help uh, relax things in the body number eight traveling now a lot of times when you travel whether it's for pleasure or for business a lot of people travel throughout the week this tends to increase vata quite a bit especially if you're flying from place to place so naturally you want to be prepared before you go so that you know you anticipate this constipation is going to happen so um definitely plan ahead make sure you have your meals set up properly you eat easily digested food eat smaller quantities make sure you hydrate with warm liquids uh, or herbal teas um, also uh, try to do your yoga and pranayama regularly and keep yourself active you know definitely do some form of exercise every day so that you don't get impacted hope you enjoyed today's episode i'm going to give you a quick recap of what i just shared today number one um, stay active, keep moving. Number two, reduce stress with the strategies I gave you. Number three, get adequate timely sleep. Number four, practice yoga asanas that I have provided. Number five, try the pranayama that I have shared. Number six, use a squatty potty or a stool in the toilet. Number seven, take care of your emotional health, do some meditation. And number eight, be prepared if you're going to be traveling anticipating what is going to happen and prepare accordingly so for this week listen to your body observe your mind and help yourself and see you next week again with a new episode have a wonderful week ahead mm -hmm.